Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So let me start with a, with a question to the audience. How many of you would like to live to be a ripe old age? Oh, good. OK. So, so this is what you have to look forward to. <laughs> So this is obviously a partial list of the many, many diseases that afflict us as we get older. And we are always surprised when you think about these diseases, something that affects your brain, so, oops, something that affects your brain, something that affects your bones, your eyes. All of these diseases have one thing in common, very rare in young people. And then about halfway through our lifespan, so 50 or 60 years in the case of humans, all of these diseases rise with very, very, very sharp kinetics. So there are two possibilities. One is that this is bad luck. All these different diseases, different tissues, different uh, manifestations, just by chance, happen to come up at the same time. But the other possibility is that it's not a coincidence, that there are basic aging processes. There's something about aging that's driving these diseases. Now, if we're right, think about it, this will revolutionize modern medicine. Because now, there won't be a cardiologist looking at your heart, and an eye doctor looking at your eyes, and, and a bone doctor looking at your bones. Now, we will be training doctors to treat aging. And that will simultaneously treat many of these diseases. So this is a dream. We're not there yet. But this is a dream. And what I'm going to tell you about today is the progress that we've made, a little bit of progress, in identifying these basic aging processes and then hopefully developing interventions. By the way, we can do it in mice. We can't do it in people yet, but we're getting there. So how do you go about identifying something that can drive all these very, very different diseases? And I'll show you one example of how we did it. So we looked at all these diseases, and we realized something striking. Most of these diseases are degenerative. And by that, I mean things don't work very well. So your eyesight doesn't work very well. Your bones get frail. Your muscles get frail. But there's one disease that follows the same trajectory, rare in young people, comes up at about the midpoint of the lifespan with very sharp kinetics, that's different. And that's this disease here, cancer. It's very difficult, it would be very difficult for me to call cancer a degenerative disease. In order for a cancer cell to form a tumor that will cause lethality, that will kill you, that cancer cell has to acquire new functions. So think about it. It's like most of these diseases are loss of function diseases. And then there's this one disease which we call a gain of function disease. It has to acquire something new. And we thought this is a good thing, because what it can do is simplify the question. Now we can ask, what does cancer have in common with an aging brain, or an aging bone, or an aging muscle? So we found an answer, or at least a partial answer. And that answer comes from knowing what we know about cancer due to many, many decades of cancer research. We know now that there are two things that are needed to form a tumor that is lethal. So one is mutations. These are not mutations you were born with. These are mutations that you acquire as an adult or even as a young person. And those are cells within your body that have picked up mutations, mostly from breathing oxygen, which is toxic. And as a consequence, the DNA is damaged, and it's changed, and you have a mutation. We also know that those mutations begin very, very early. We can detect them even in embryos. So now you can ask the question, well, why don't we get cancer more often than we do? And the answer is because we have encoded in our genome hundreds of genes that qualify for being termed tumor suppressor genes. And they converge on a few basic mechanisms that help keep cancer at a low level at least for half of our lifespan. And those two tumor suppressor mechanisms are a process called apoptosis, or cell death. Very clear, a dead cell can't form a tumor. So a cell senses this mutation and dies. The other process is a process called cellular senescence. Cells stop proliferating forever. Also, really simple, a cell that can't divide can't form a tumor. So we think this process
process, the senescence process, is more important. And the reason is we know that senescent cells accumulate exponentially with the same trajectory of those diseases with age. So everyone here, if you're young, you have few senescent cells. If you're middle-aged, you have more. And if you're old, you have a lot more. The other reason why we think senescence is more important is we see it at virtually every age-related disease we've examined. So that's everything from macular degeneration, which causes blindness, to COPD, which causes lung problems in the elderly, heart disease. And we even see it in precancerous lesions. So these cells are a smoking gun, right? They're present at the right time and the right place to be driving multiple age-related diseases. The question is, how do they do it? And they do it because they're secreting molecules outside of themselves. So here's a cell that doesn't divide. It's not doing anything, but it's secreting stuff. And that stuff that it secretes causes a process called inflammation. And it's inflammation that is the key to understanding every one of those diseases I put on the first slide. So all of those diseases are either caused by or greatly exacerbated by a process called inflammation. And what inflammation does is it destroys tissues. It makes tissues not function well. It prevents stem cells from behaving properly. And it even promotes cancer. So this is the glue. So here's the model. You have a young tissue, and with age, we accumulate senescent cells. We've proven that in the laboratory. These cells produce molecules that they, produ that they secrete outside of themselves, and it causes neighboring cells to fail to function. And of course, what I told you is that with age, we're also accumulating these mutant cells, and we believe that these secretions can then even drive the progression of late-life cancers. So <laughs> I'm going to cheer you up. All right. So what do we do about this? So what most scientists are doing now are thinking about two strategies. So one is stop the secretion. So if we can prevent these cells from secreting stuff, maybe we can suppress this driver of aging. And the other is to simply find a way to get these cells, instead of sticking around, get them to die. And both progress is being made on both of them. We actually very much favor this last approach. And I'll show you why. Um, here are two mice. Now, these are not normal mice. They're mutant. They have a premature aging disease. So we're doing the experiment now in naturally aged mice. But these are prematurely <coughs> aging mice. They're litter mates. And both of them have the mutation that caused them to age prematurely. So mice normally live two and a half to three years. These mice live only eight or nine months. They're about eight and a half months now. So this, these mice accumulate senescent cells at a very high rate, much faster than normal mice. And we can, we can do a genetic trick. So this is only done in uh, transgenic, genetically engineered mice. That's why we can't do it in people yet. But we can get those senescent cells to die. So here's a prematurely aged mouse. It's going to die within half a year or so, or ha uh, yeah, half a year, or so, half, uh, half a month or so. It has cataracts. It has weak muscles, poor bones, and almost no subcutaneous fat. Here's the same mouse. All the senescent cells are gone. No cataracts, no muscle mass loss, no weak bones, lots of subcutaneous fat. Now, these mice died at the same time. So no increase in lifespan, but obviously an increase in health span. This mouse died much healthier, much happier, we think, as much as we can tell that about mice. So the promise of aging research really, and what is our main challenge, is to translate these findings in mice to people. And um, what we want to do is find ways to eliminate senescent cells in people, provide new stem cells, reduce this inflammation, and maybe even engineer new organs and tissues, all of these on the horizon. What we really want, because we're not sure we can extend lifespan, is to slow down aging. And I will leave you with a quote from Thurgood Marshall. How many of you know who Thurgood Marshall is? Yeah, he's first black Supreme Court justice. Uh, 
in an era which was uh, slightly less enlightened than our current era. Someone, so these are lifetime appointments, right? So someone had the nerve to ask him, how long do you plan to live? Okay, here's my punchline. His reply was beautiful. He said, I plan to live until 110 and then to die from a bullet wound from a jealous husband. 